All right. Time to do an unboxerizing on this Vortex Defender CCW 6 MOA Red Dot. Oh boy, look at that. Look at that thing. Okay, so it's got a little rail mount. Yeah. Cool. Oh, can you see? Yeah, there, there's the dot. Nice. All right. What else we got in here? All up in here. There's some foam block. <sighs> Let's see. Instruction manual. Well folded. Ah, and a cleaning cloth. Helpful. Yes. So anyways, I'm not going to go through the entire manual, and I should probably be narrating, but um, this little box comes with, let's see, a shim plate, one degree shim plate, used to angle the optic slightly to gain elevation when zeroing at less than 15 yards. These are screws for a SIG P365. These are screws for an FN. 509. These are screws for a Smith & Wesson 2.0. These are for an HK VPN Tactical or a Kimber Aegis or KHX Custom. These are for a Glock MOS Ruger 57 or a Springfield Hellcat. There we go. I need that, that one. This is for the Koenig TP9SFX or the TP9SC, the SIG P320, M17, M18, and RXP, and the CZ P10 series. And then this, this is a little doohickey, a little tool for getting, I guess, the plate off and then possibly adjusting something. Yeah, it looks like it's for adjusting. And then a couple of extra screws, probably for that. So, what's this going to go on? It's going to go on this, my Hellcat RDP. So, as you can see, it's clear. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave it assembled the gun, that is, and just put this thing together, just bolt it on right now, so that you can see what this Mammer Jammer will actually look like. Let's take a look. And I'll have a, once I bolt it down, I'll let you see the Let's see if I can get you a picture of it right now. Yeah, there you go. So it does co-witness, and it's a good size. So what I'm going to do is get the Hellcat screws, and this is, I'm not going to zero this on camera, although maybe I could. We'll see. We'll see how I feel about it once I've bolted it on, if I feel like doing more video. But... Okay. I mean, this is pretty... The installation of these things is pretty basic. It's one of the things I like about firearms, is that the... They're kind of like puzzles. The way everything fits together and operates. Um just comes together very nicely. A well-crafted firearm, that is. And well-crafted accessories. 
I don't know the torque spec. I could look that up, but what I'm going to do is snug it down. Not over tight, just snug. Finger tight. So there you go. Yeah. Yeah, that looks good. And then, what's nice about it is you can you can rack the gun using that thing. It's got this kind of knurled front to it, so you can do a attack rack. I mean, that's what it's there for. Um, yeah, that's cool. I mean, it looks pretty well zeroed to me. But we can find out if I just remove this compensator, take that little that little feller off, and set him on my fancy handy dandy <clears throat> mat. Move over here with my laser light bore cider doohickey. See about doing this up. Doing it up. Which one do I use though? So it's got to be And I have a little one. A real little guy. Which I'm not seeing. I presume it's that. But it should go on the other way. I would think. There's a littler one. Huh. Yeah, that's that's not how that's supposed to work. Where's the littler one? The little guy. Is it under or something? Is it hiding? I have all of my... Ah, there it is. all of my accessories together in one box. You know, ostensibly to make it easier, but you have to actually look under the, the tray. So that is the one for a 9mm barrel. And... Got to adjust it. So another part of this video will be doing the bore sighting. So what you're supposed to do is it's really incremental stuff. But you have to do that like that and then tighten it down. So there we go. So now this is stuck in the end of the barrel and I tightened the <clears throat> expansion nut by turning the bore cider and then this is the tricky part with this thing I don't like this aspect of this design this battery tray is a real nuisance to get out it will be at least it's not making a liar of me might be making a fool of me, but it's not making a liar of me. There we go. So then you take the little batteries and they go in some direction. Uh, not really indicated. 
by the device. So let's just try with the negative side down and see if that gets me to where I need to be. Uh, no. The reason I'm not editing this is not just laziness, but I don't know. I think that for people who are somewhat new to the world of firearms, I mean, I'm, I'm not like old firearm, family firearms, you know, legacy here. I'm, I come from a family that actually doesn't like firearms, but I learned that they are sometimes necessary and they're an important thing for people to have. There we go. So now, got a laser. And just to get an idea, let's see, I'm going to have to hold this up above the camera a little bit. So the red dot is high. So what I'm going to do is adjust it with the little adjuster doohickey, this guy. And I just had coffee. It's the, but I appear to be jittery. I've been having a lot of coffee lately. So there's this little adjuster knob right there, or screw. This one is for left and right. This one is for up and down, presumably. It's sort of process of elimination there. So it looks like turning it counterclockwise gets it to go up. Sorry, I'm not demonstrating that to you. There we go. So counterclockwise appears to make it go up. I don't know if you can see that. But of course that's at whatever that distance to the wall is. I'm going to need to adjust this at a greater distance. So let's go outside and hopefully not scare my neighbors. Let's see here. That is good, actually. So, I think this is properly sighted already. The only thing left to do would really be to take it to the range and find out. So there we go. Time to put everything away. And what I was taught as a young lad was when you're done with your tools, always put them away so that you can find them the next time you need them. Even if they are hidden under the, the tray. But at least you know, you'll notice that I didn't cut the scene and then suddenly reappear with my tool. The reason is because they were all in the same place. So there we go. My bore cider is back. I'll reinstall the compensator. 
And the trick with this compensator is you there's a little button here, and I mentioned this on my other video with the Hellcat, but you just sort of get it started. You have to press the button to get it onto the threads. And then make sure you're not cross-threading it. You don't want to cross-thread your compensator. So it requires being gentle. And like turning it backwards, waiting for it to click. There we go. All right? There we go. So as it gets closer and closer to the notch, what you'll notice is um, it starts to get stuck. And you really have to jam down on that button to open it up so that it will get past the indexing notch on the bottom of the barrel. And there you go, you're good. So that's pretty, pretty good looking. Um, Yes, that magazine has ammo in it, but I am not going to rack it. So the one thing I will look up in this instruction manual is um, how to set it up so it turns off. So there's battery installation and replacement. <clears throat> Power up to turn defender on, to, de to turn the defender CCW red dot on, press either the up or down button. To turn off the defender CCW manually, press and hold the down button for approximately five seconds. Okay, so let's see here. Let's see if I can show you this thing. All right, there we go. Now you can see it. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. So now it's off. Auto shut off. The red dot will automatically shut off after 14 hours. Powering down the red dot manually will disable the auto shut off feature. To turn on the auto shut off feature, press and hold both the up and down buttons for three seconds. During these three seconds, the dot will turn on at the lowest brightness setting and gradually increase to the brightest setting. Once the dot has reached its brightest setting, the auto shutoff feature is now on. <clears throat> motion activation. The Defender CCW is equipped with motion activation. This feature is only available when the auto shutoff feature is turned on. By allowing the unit to shut off automatically after 14 hours, the dot will turn on automatically the next time you pick up your gun. Powering down the red dot manually will disable the motion activation. And, well, button lockout. Let's read that. Button lockout. The Defender CCW includes, and I know I said I wouldn't do this, but I'm not reading the whole thing. The Defender CCW includes a button lockout mode to prevent unintentional setting changes. To turn on the button lockout feature, press and hold the up button for three seconds. The dot will blink off for 0.5 seconds and then remain on. To turn the button lockout feature off, press and hold the up button for 3 seconds. The dot will blink off two times in one second to confirm the lockout mode has been disabled and then will remain on. Brightness selection. The Defender CCW Red Dot site offers 10 brightness settings, 8 daylight settings, and 2 night vision settings. Adjust the dot brightness by pressing the appropriate up or down button. So anyways, like I said, I'm not going to go through the whole thing. Um, you can do that if you choose to buy it. Or you could probably just go to the Vortex website and see this, this manual. Um, What I am going to do is fire up this auto shut off feature. So there we go. Press up button to turn on, and it is. I think you can see it. There it is on. And then let's see here. 
auto shut off. Press and hold both the up and down buttons for three seconds. During these three seconds, the dot will turn on at the lowest brightness setting and and gradually increase to the brightest setting. Okay, here we go. One, two, three. Oh, I think you saw that. Okay. Great. So, it should have the motion activation on now. So, the auto shut off feature is turned on and this should shut off on its own in 14 hours and I'm going to show you I'm going to show you adjusting there we go so that's pretty useful actually the up and down buttons for adjusting the brightness yeah so what remains to be seen with this thing and you can't really see the dot now there you go, now you can see it. It's still plenty bright for me. The camera doesn't quite pick it up that well. But, yeah, this, this looks really good. Like I was saying, the thing that remains to be seen is how well it actually shoots. So that will be a video for another day. Thanks for watching. Catch you later. There we go. It's another day at the range. These are six inch targets at five yards. The rounds start hitting in the lower left there. That's not the sight's fault. That's me. I tend to do that when I'm shooting. It's a thing I'm working on. Um, but the, when I was doing it right, that sight was spot on and I could hit the red um, pretty consistently and confidently.